Hey, how's it going? I'm Jonathan Baylor, and I am here with my friends Trina and Mariah, and we are going to be talking about an amazing breakthrough form of exercise that is specifically engineered to cause a metabolic change in our body, to heal our hormones, lower our set point, and reverse and help prevent diabetes. And it's extremely exciting because traditionally when we're told about exercise, it's either about building muscle or burning calories. And I'm not here to say that either of those things are bad or wrong. I'm just here to say that we're here to lower our set points, we're here to heal our hormones, and we're here to prevent and to treat diabetes. And just like there's a certain form of exercise that makes you better at golf, you know, you do sort of practice your golf swing. If you want to become a better cyclist, you cycle. If you want to lower your set point and prevent and reverse diabetes, we want to do a specific form of exercise known as eccentric resistance training, eccentric. Does that all sound good so far? Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. So I, I want to just give a little bit of a background and then I just want to jump into uh, some demonstrations. So first, you might be wondering what, what does eccentric exercise mean? Well, your muscle actually has three different ways it can contract. So uh, traditionally you hear about lifting weights, right? Lifting weights. What we're going to talk about here today is lowering weights, interestingly enough. And before we go any further, I just said lifting weights and you might be thinking, I want to lift weights because I don't want to get big and bulky. This is sometimes a concern people have. And just real quick, because I don't want you to be afraid of what we're going to do, because what we're going to do is one of the most potent forms of therapy that you can ever engage in for your health long term. There is a gene in your body called GDF8, and it actually limits how big your muscles can grow. And females and the vast majority of males physically, genetically cannot build bulky muscles. And it's important to know that the average female has about the same level of testosterone as about an eight or 10 year old boy. And that's not enough testosterone to build muscle, like bulky muscle, no matter how hard you resistance train. So I want you to feel fully empowered to be strong and to be just sassy and just punch <laughs> diabetes in the face because I don't want anything to hold you back. So does that maybe address any concerns you might have about resistance training or weight lifting? Yeah. Okay, cool. Because it seems a little strange to me now, but my mother tells me a story about how when she was in university, my mother's in her 70s, she was not even allowed where they weight trained. Because back then, women were taught weight training is actually bad for you. And weight training is, is profoundly good for you, especially the, the way we're going to talk about it here. And you don't even need weights. You can just use body weight. But anyway, I was talking about eccentric resistance training. So your muscles can contract in three ways. This is called concentric. So when it actually contracts, that's concentric. Mm -hmm. When you hold something, like you're holding a gallon of milk stationary, that's called isometric. <clears throat> and when you lower down or extend the muscle, that's eccentric. So if you're doing a bicep curl, this is concentric, mm -hmm. holding it isometric, releasing it eccentric. Why does that matter? What's really, really cool is that your muscles, they, they can generate about 40% more force eccentrically than they can concentrically meaning that you are literally about 40% stronger when you, and I know it sounds weird to say contract extending, but if your muscle wasn't contracting when you were doing this, your arm would just flop down, right? And why this is really powerful is, let's say for example, that a push-up is an exercise that maybe you've never been able to do in the past. Well, you might not be able to push yourself up because that's a concentric movement, but you might be able to lower yourself down an eccentric movement. And by developing strength eccentrically, you will actually strengthen the entire muscle while generating a tremendous hormonal response in your body. And this is something that, you know, in the past you might have said, I just can't do push ups. But now we can provide a methodology where you can perform that exercise and myriad other exercises in a specific way that anyone, anywhere, at any level of experience can do to help cause a hormonal reaction that reverses and prevents diabetes. Is that cool? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So <laughs> let's, let's put this into practice. And one of the reasons, again, that <clears throat> the reason we want to contract our muscles as forcefully as possible, or we want to use the eccentric movement to make sure that we tax the muscle as deeply as possible and as safely as possible, is uh, 
most people are familiar, well, it would be kind of impossible not to be familiar with the fact that you have different muscle groups on your body and they do different things. For example, your, your bicep that I was pointing to earlier does this and your quadricep does this, right? Or actually, it does this. Your hamstring does this. Yeah. <laughs> so your quadricep <laughs> does this. <clears throat> so no matter how much I do this, I'm not ever going to activate that muscle, obviously, right? But what most people don't know, and this is really where profound hormonal benefit is found, within all of your muscles, there's four different types of fibers that make up the muscle. So whether it's your bicep, your tricep, your quadricep, your hamstring, your gluteals, within that muscle is what's called your type 1A muscle fibers, your type 2A muscle fibers, your type 2X muscle fibers, and your type 2B muscle fibers. So let's just imagine that those muscle fibers were sitting on the ground here this way. So type 1A, 2A, 2X, 2B. These muscle fibers generate a little bit of force for a long period of time. So these are the muscle fibers that allow you to <laughs> walk around all day, just like this, dee, dee, <laughs> just like that. And you can do a little bit of force for a long period of time. So a little bit of force, long period of time, lots of force, short period of time. So if the only form of exercise you ever do is this, not only will you look really cool, <laughs> but <clears throat> you could do that for literally 20 hours every day of the week. And all of these muscle fibers would never get activated. Ever. Ever. Why does that matter? Well, inherently, you're like, well, isn't it better to work more muscle fibers than less? I mean, we're all kind of like, the reason we want to work our leg muscles, either by doing cycling, is because you work more muscles, you get more results. Bigger muscle, bigger result. Smaller muscle, smaller result. But what's amazing is researchers have found that when we activate these muscle fibers, and like the, the, the most forceful ones, specifically type 2B, these muscle fibers historically only ever got activated when we needed to generate a tremendous amount of force. And usually, the only reason a human being needs to generate a tremendous amount of force for a short period of time is a crisis. Like a tiger jumps out of the, and so instead of doing this, oh, I'm just gathering my berries, I'm just gathering my berries, you're like, oh, a tiger, woo. So, so right then for a burst for a short period of time, a lot of force. Okay, <clears throat> why does that matter? In order to generate a tremendous amount of force for a short period of time, your body has to like sound the hormonal alarm and it has to uh, cause what's called uh, an anabolic cascade in your body. So things like adrenaline, norepinephrine, epinephrine, testosterone, less in women, more in men, all get released simultaneously because your body's like, holy moly, fire alarm's been pulled. And what this does, especially from a diabetes perspective, is it helps to flush glucose or sugar out of our muscles, helps to clear that out, helps to clear out insulin, and your body's like, uh, batten down the hatches, you know, ew, 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 emergency, emergency. So when we do that, we get this tremendous effect in our body, this tremendous hormonal effect that, remember, could never be achieved ever, 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 ever <laughs> by this. And the reason I'm doing this ridiculous movement is if you go to the gym, what do you see most people doing? <laughs> Stuff like this, right? They're just... Do, do, do. I'm going to lift my little weights and do this and talk and text and do, do, do. What we're going to do is the opposite of that. So we're going to do very brief but very intense and very safe and slow movements that are eccentric so that we generate the most force so that we activate all of our muscle fibers and trigger that tremendous hormonal response that no quantity of a lower quality or lower intensity exercise could ever trigger. Does that make sense so far? Okay, cool. Now, the one question you might have is I use the analogy of getting chased by a tiger. So you might be like, Jonathan, does this mean we're gonna have to be getting chased by tigers and flipping tires and throwing dumbbells across the room? The answer is no. <clears throat> Our first objective is to always be safe. Because if we're not safe, if we injure ourselves, we can't move at all, and that's not helpful. The second thing we want to do is just find ways to safely and slowly 
add as much resistance to our biggest muscle groups as possible. So we wanna work our biggest muscle groups and we wanna work all of the muscle fibers within our muscle groups. So we're going to start with our legs. Now this is really, really important. If you take nothing else away from what we talk about here today, from here down is up to 70% of all the muscle in your body. But like especially men, spend about 7% of their time, <laughs> right? You see all these, these big, big arms. Yeah, you, <laughs> Stick leg day. Yeah, you don't, you don't wanna do that. So, <clears throat> and so this is important, because some people, they have, they have shoulder problems. They don't, you know, you can still get 70 to 80% of the benefit of everything we're talking about here if you never go above the waist. And you might say, Jonathan, well, but isn't it good to have a strong core? That's all great, but remember, our goal is to trigger a specific hormonal response to lower your set point to help protect you against diabetes. Not that any other goal is bad or wrong, it's just, you know, if, if you said, Jonathan, I wanna run a marathon and be a power lifter, I'd say it's kinda hard to train for both of those at the same time, right? So right now, we're just gonna be focused on lowering our set point, hormonal change, reversing diabetes, okay? So we're gonna start with our legs, and then our second biggest muscle group is our back. And again, if you ask a lot of 10 people on the street, what's a good back exercise? They don't even know, right? And that's your second biggest muscle group. So we have to talk about that. Then we're gonna talk about your chest. That's your third biggest muscle group. Then we're gonna talk about your shoulders. And then we're actually not gonna talk about anything else. Okay. Because if you work your legs, your back, your chest, and your shoulders, you'll have worked about 90 plus percent of the muscle on your body, and I'd rather you spend the rest of your time with your family, with your friends, maybe cooking some healthy, high quality meals, rather than worrying about like whether or not your forearms are getting a good exercise or anything along those lines, okay? All right, so first things first, how do we do eccentric training for our legs from the comfort of our home? Okay, so the, <clears throat> the trick with eccentric training is it's not like a new exercise. It's a way to do other exercises. So for example, if we wanted to do a squat movement. So a traditional squat movement, right, is very similar. If you've ever sat on a chair, you know how to squat down. It's just like this, right? So you're just squatting down like that. But the question now becomes, how do we make it harder on the way down than on the way up? And squatting is an interesting example because you'll notice that Generally, uh, people, if they're older or if you're tired, it's never really the sitting down that's the problem, it's the getting up. Mm -hmm. And even more anecdotally, if you've ever watched movies and you see you know, a man is bench pressing, they never have a problem lowering the weight. Right. It's lifting the weight back up. That's because eccentrically, you're stronger, okay? So I want you to focus on using your muscles at their strongest. It's a little bit like riding with your dominant hand. You could write with your non-dominant hand, but why? Your dominant hand is so much more effective. I want you to use your muscles and work your muscles the way they're most effective. So, as an example of how to modify a squat so that it is more eccentrically intense than it is concentrically intense is the following. So I'm gonna do it first, and then I'm actually gonna ask Trina if you'll kind of do it with me and then if you could sort of follow suit afterwards and you, you get to, we'll kind of kind of test you to see if we communicated this correctly, okay? So I'm gonna actually ask you to, I'm gonna do it without uh, holding on to anything, but I'm gonna ask you to come over here and actually, uh, let's do it, I'm gonna change my mind. You come over here, Trina, right there, and Mariah, you come over here for this chair, and I would ask that you both use these bikes to stabilize yourself, and I'm going, can you see me in the mirror? So I'm gonna actually do it over here. You're gonna watch me in the mirror. <clears throat> and just to be clear, you do not need to do this in an aerobics room, in a gym, <laughs> using these little bikes, right? You just, I want you to have a chair behind you just in case something bad happens, so you're not gonna fall. And I want you to have something to hold on to as you learn how to do the movement. It doesn't have to be an exercise bike. <laughs> I just, I don't, anyone to ride in and be like, can I do this? I don't have an exercise bike. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is I just want you to do a regular squat movement. So, and we're gonna do it on a count of two. So we're gonna do eccentric down, one, two. We're gonna hold it for two seconds, and then we're gonna come up, one, two. Okay, so just follow with me. One, two, hold, one, two, 
up one, two. Okay. The first and most basic way you can accentuate the eccentric portion of a movement is simply by doing the eccentric portion slower. This is what's called time under tension, and we're going to increase the time under tension of the eccentric portion of the movement. So <clears throat> I'm not going to do it this time because I don't want to get all sweaty and have my mic fall off. So, and, and you're going to start sweating and you're going to be like, how am I sweating moving so slow? What I'm going to ask you to do, we did two, two, two. You're going to do six, one, two. And I'm going to count it out for you. So you're going to go down slow for six, hold it for one, up for two. Okay, ready? Go. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hold it for one, up, one, two. Now, could you feel it a bit more intensely during the eccentric portion? Cool. Now, <clears throat> a couple tricks. If you ever want to increase the resistance and again, further tax your muscles, there's a couple tactics. One is to go slower. The other portion is, and this is something that you can experiment with and just listen to your body. You'll notice that I don't want you to do a full squat. I want you to squat like one eighth of the way. So just do this with me, squat one eighth of the way. Do you notice how you could probably hold this for five minutes with no problem? Okay, so there's easier and harder points of what's called a resistance curve when you're doing weight training. Now in contrast, if you go to the very bottom position and try to hold that, you're gonna notice that's the hardest portion of the movement. So if you ever wanna make a uh, eccentric, accentuated squat or any movement, find the most difficult portion of it and hold that for an extended period of time. Why do you want to do that? You want to do that because you're taking your muscle when it is the most forceful eccentrically and you're challenging it most intensely so that you activate the most muscle fibers possible, so you trigger the biggest hormonal reaction possible, so you protect yourself against diabetes as much as possible. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's try one more, and this time I want you to go down for two seconds till you get to that hardest part. I want you to hold the hardest part for five seconds, and then I just want you to sit down. I don't even want you to worry about coming back up. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> well, I'm just gonna count to two, then I want you at two, you're in the most difficult position. Your uh, rear end should be just touching the chair, but none of your weight should be on it. And then you're gonna hold it for five. And then at five, uh, at six, sit down, okay? Let's go, down one, two. One, two, three, four, five, down. Cool, now, stay seated. Now, <clears throat> if you wanted to continue to do this, what you could very well do is say, look, I'm just going to focus on the eccentric portion of this movement. So now you can just stand up kind of whenever you want. So just stand up. It's not really part of the exercise. Just stand on up. Okay. Now you could do another eccentric squat where you're really focused on only the lowering portion. And you're not even really thinking about the whole lifting of weights anymore, right. which is mm -hmm. it's, it, we're lowering weights not lifting weights. And it's, it's a sort of a fascinating, different way to think about resistance training. But does that make sense so far? Cool. Now, some more advanced ways that you could increase resistance if you wanted to. And this is why we have something to hold on to. Right now, when you're doing this movement, I'll stay behind you here, <clears throat> you are putting your weight evenly down both legs, I would assume, okay? If you want it to really challenge yourself, what you can do is you can cheat one leg forward a few inches. And you can say, I'm gonna squat down, and I'm gonna try to put 70% of my weight on this leg and 30% of my weight on this leg. And here's what you're gonna notice, which is really fascinating. You might be able to do that on the way down, but if you try to do that on the way up, it will be impossible. So what you can do now, which is really creative, is you can overload or you can eccentrically overload one leg. So let's say I weigh 200 pounds, just to simplify math, which is pretty close to accurate. And if I did a traditional squat, I'd be doing 100 pounds, 100 pounds on both legs, right? And let's say hypothetically, I was able to just do a one-legged squat. <clears throat> I would be going 200 pounds down and I might be able to do that 
200 pounds up, no deal, but I can put my other leg down and do a regular squat up. So I can overload eccentrically down and then do a regular movement up just to further and more deeply tax this muscle safely so it's like you're being chased by a tiger, but no crazy, dangerous, high impact movements are necessary, right? We're doing this. You could do this in your living room if you wanted to. So you can get that sort of deep, primal, hormonal cascade quietly while listening to yoga music if you wanted to in your living room. And that's really, really cool. Okay, so I want you to just try that. I want you to try to just shift your weight so that you're standing with your, let's say your left leg about three inches forward. And then when now I want you to squat down nice and slow for a four count, trying to put as much weight as you feel comfortable with on your right leg. And we're gonna go down for a count of four. And then I just want you to sit down and then I want you to reposition your feet like you're doing a normal squat and then just stand back up regular, okay? So Jimmy, that one leg forward, your left leg forward. And then we're gonna go down for a count of four with the majority of your weight on your right leg. Ready, go. One, two, three, four, seated. And just position your legs normally. Stand back up. Okay. Now, I want you to sit back down. Go ahead. Now, <clears throat> attempt safely, hold on to the bike. Don't really, I just want you to feel this. I want you to try to stand up with as much weight on your right leg as you were able to go down with. Just attempt it and feel how much stronger you were on the way down than you are on the way up. Does that make sense? Uh -huh. Okay, so now attempt safely, do not hurt yourself, to try to stand up essentially using 70% you know, of your weight on your right leg. And then when it becomes too hard, which it will, stop and don't actually do it. <laughs> Okay, let's give it a try now. Okay, so good job, you did it. <laughs> did you feel a difference between on the way down and on the way up? Yeah. Okay, perfect. So we've gone through a couple different illustrations for how you can make an exercise more or less difficult during the eccentric portion. You can go slower during the eccentric portion. You can find the most difficult point on the force curve and you can hold that and you can use one limb with sort of all your body weight down and then both of your limbs to lift yourself up. And you may say, Jonathan, that's interesting for squats, but what do I do for any other movement, right? But I wanted to teach you these principles because now we're gonna stop squatting. Let's come out over here because <clears throat> we're taking a bit of the teach a person to fish, they're good, right. rather than give them a fish and then they want some more fish. Right. right. I think that's the saying, right? Yeah, Give something it, like that. Something yeah. like that? Okay, so now let's apply this exact same logic to a back movement. So we're gonna do a row type movement. And what we're gonna use is actually these wonderful resistance bands here, which you can buy on amazon.com for $10. And you can take them on airplanes. They're super handy, super convenient. Since we don't have something to uh, anchor these two, safely actually you know we kind of do i'm going to ask you mariah if you don't mind could you sit in this chair sure and then what we're going to do is we're actually going to tie it around the chair with you sitting there and then i'm going to have you guys alternate but i want to show you just a very simple example of how a traditional row and actually if you could tie yours to that side of the chair whoops okay now <clears throat> traditional row is just like we said like a row i'm going to row Okay, up, down. So now I'm gonna test you. This is the movement. This is not a new movement. We're not learning, this is a row. This is just right. a regular old row. You go to YouTube, type in row. They'll teach you how to do a row, right? <clears throat> but now if you wanted to increase the eccentric resistance on this row, what would you do? Step back. Okay, but what about just the eccentric? And then real slow. Yeah. So you could bring it up for two, slow. Slow, slow it down on the way down, right? So we could do two up, hold it, nice and slow on the way down. And you'll notice right here, super easy, much easier than right here. So you could even go up for two, hold this, and then real slow on the way down, okay? okay. So there was, we talked about three tactics. One was slower eccentrically, 
We talked about finding the hardest portion of the movement and focusing on that. Mm -hmm. And then we talked about using two limbs concentrically, right. one limb eccentrically. So watch this. Okay. So I just took whatever, let's say this is 10 pounds and this is 10 pounds. 10 pounds, 10 pounds, 20 pounds. Okay. And I might not be able to lift 20 pounds, but I can lift 10 and I can lower 20 because right. I'm 40% stronger on the way down. So give that a try. I want you to just do this right here. Boom, okay, and back down, rock and roll. I want you to just do, put them both in one hand like this, and I want you to row it up, okay? Back down, cool. Separate it out, row it back. From here, transfer it over, bring it down nice and slow. So, another reason this is cool. Traditionally, people stop. You may have heard of the term failure. Weight training is the only context in life where failure is awesome. <laughs> because you often want to go to a muscular failure, meaning your muscle can't do it anymore. So traditionally, people would stop resistance training when they can't lift anymore. But remember, you're stronger lowering than you are lifting. So now we don't have to stop when you can't do this anymore. We can we will only stop when you cannot eccentrically lower the movement anymore. So we'll continue to do this. Drop over to here. Lower it down nice and slow. Boom, boom, nice and slow. And then traditionally, this would be the movement you would do, traditionally, and then you would stop when you can't do this anymore. But now, you'll be able to do split the resistance on the way up, take it on the way down, and you'll be able to generate radically more force for longer, triggering a bigger hormonal response, lowering the set point more, and defending against diabetes more aggressively. And you'll notice, again, this isn't a new exercise. It's just a new way to approach exercise in general. Does it make sense? Uh -huh. Okay, do you wanna give it a try? So let's go ahead, and I will sit in the chair. You guys can both do it. <clears throat> so I want you to try so let's do it a traditional way. So you're going to use both arms back and both arms down. Feel that? Cool beans. Okay, now we're going to go both arms back, hold it at the top, and then super slow. I want you to go down for a count of 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Cool? Okay, now I'm going to have you take it up, and I'm going to have you transfer it over to your right arm, and then we're going to lower it down nice and slow. And hopefully what you're experiencing is just, this is a whole different way of thinking mm -hmm. about movement. And what I wanted to do is just activate this in your brain. Say to yourself, like, how can I play around with maybe my existing methods of exercise such that I can actually start to do movements in a new way and maybe even try movements that I've never done before because I'm gonna reveal a little secret that you told me before we got on camera, which is that we started talking about push-ups a little bit, and you said, I don't know if I can do a push-up. <laughs> but now that you understand that you're 40% stronger eccentrically than you are concentrically, there's a chance that we might be able to have you do a portion of a push-up, which will enable you to develop the strength to eventually be able to do a regular push-up. So let's give that a chance right now. So we've done a little bit of legs, we've done a little bit of back, and now we're gonna work the chest through push-ups, okay? So I'm gonna grab these two mats over here. And we'll just lay these out like this, side to side. <clears throat> and if you don't mind, I'm gonna pop in the middle. If you guys could just flank me on either side. And then we're just gonna get down on the mat like this with our, with our knees. If you go ahead and face out this way, okay? So you guys face like this. I'm gonna go out here so that the camera can see me from the side. Okay, so traditionally, a push-up, and I'm just showing examples because I want you to be able to do this in everyday life. A traditional push-up is done like this, right? So eccentric down, isometric, concentric up. Now for a lot of people, a push-up is not something that they can do comfortably. But possibly lowering themselves down is, and possibly if they put their knees down, they could definitely lower themselves down. So now that we understand a little bit more about how our muscles work, different types of contractions, different impact those contractions have on our hormones, we could say, okay, Push-ups are a good way to work my chest muscles. 
I can't push myself up, but maybe I could lower myself down. So put your knees down, and then I want you to get in a push-up position, which is about your hands are slightly uh, wider than shoulder width apart. And then if comfortable, I want you to slowly lower yourself down. And then you really don't need to worry about pushing yourself up. I just want you to kind of stay down. So just nice and slow, okay? And then however is comfortable for you, just get back up into a, a normal position, okay? Now, if I asked you to just do a bunch of regular push-ups, you might say, Jonathan, <laughs> you're, crazy. you're crazy, right? <laughs> but could you imagine if you had five minutes on a Wednesday that you could just say, hey, I'm gonna do nice and slow, six repetitions of 10 seconds down. And what you will find is that after you do that, you might be able to do in three weeks, eight repetitions of 10 seconds down. And what you might find is a month later, you know, I'm just gonna lift my knees up and I'm gonna be able to just do this all the way down. And then, you know, if I keep my knees down, I'm, I feel stronger. I can push myself up. And what you're doing is you're, again, you're figuring out ways to unlock and tap into muscle fibers that, and this is amazing, and think about it, it's true. Many of us, because we don't get chased by tigers very much anymore, at least not typically. So there's a chance that we've never worked our type 2B muscle fibers in our entire lives. And those are the most hormonally beneficial muscle fibers in your entire body. So while this might be kind of like a mind-bending, whole new way of thinking about exercise, how, like, if you never worked, if like this leg was in a cast for your entire life and the muscles never got worked, and then today that cast came off and you were able to work those muscles, how much results could you see and how quickly could you see them? Because you're literally, like those muscles are like an untapped gold mine of, uh, of results in your body. So by figuring out ways for us to do these movements in a safe way that maximizes resistance, we can activate all of our muscle fibers. We can do that very safely and we can do it in the comfort of our own home, which is incredibly, incredibly cool. And of course, we could talk for hours and hours and hours about how to take, you, know, you could literally say, caller, name an exercise. Okay, here's how to do that, focusing on the eccentric portion. But you know, pick any exercise you want, pick any exercise routine you want, and you can increase the quality of it, you can increase the hormonal impact of it, and you can increase your protection against diabetes by focusing on increasing the resistance used during the eccentric portion of the movement. And you will activate muscle fibers that you may have never activated in your entire life. So if you've ever felt, I've tried everything and it hasn't worked, you now know a scientific fact that should give you more hope, I hope, than you've ever had when it comes to exercise which is there is a category of muscle fibers in my body that are the most beneficial that there's a good chance I have never exercised ever. And that's really, really, really cool. Rock and roll? Yeah. Cool. Any high level questions? <laughs> you answered them all. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, again, Trina, and Mariah, thank you so much for joining me today. I know this was a whirlwind of information and certainly we'll have some follow-up videos where we show more examples of how to do this with various exercises. But I really, really appreciate your time and hopefully this was helpful. And hopefully to all our friends out there, this was helpful for you. Again, just like everything else in life, as you can see, we increase the quality of our actions, the quality of our resistance training. We increase the quality of our results, the quality of our life, the quality of our health. You are quality and you deserve quality. I'm Jonathan Baylor. I'll see you again soon.